All right, today we are going to be talking about the crop sun hemp. Um, sun hemp is a potential forage crop that I have been doing research on for the last four years to try and determine if it is a viable forage crop for here in Wyoming. So to start with, sun hemp is known as Crotillaria juncia. Um, it is not in any way related to industrial hemp or cannabis. Um, so it is a tropical legume. It is a warm season plant, so it's going to perform well under hot conditions, hot growing conditions um, in our summers. And as a legume, what it has is the ability to fix its own nitrogen. Um, so when we say fixed nitrogen, most plants require us to provide them with a source of nitrogen through fertilizer. But sun hemp as a legume is able to utilize nitrogen that is in the atmosphere and convert it into a form that the plant is then able to use. So it means that growing this crop in a rotation can actually potentially add nitrogen to, to the system instead of removing it, which is what most crops do. Sun hemp is also a short day crop. This means that it does not reliably flower if there's more than 12 hours of sunshine. So if you think about our summers here in Wyoming, our days are very long. Um, and that means that sun hemp should not go into its reproductive phase. This is really important and a benefit because first of all, it means that we're not worried about the crop setting seed and potentially um, being problematic as a weed or an invasive species. Um, it's also beneficial because, as is common with a lot of forage crops, typically when they go into their reproductive phase, we start to lose feed quality of that crop. So by having it stay reproductive during our long days here in Wyoming, um, we can hopefully maintain the quality of that crop uh, longer in its growth phase. Zen hemp is also a crop that I'm interested in for Wyoming because it is relatively drought tolerant. Um, so it can grow with as little as 10 inches of um, moisture. It is tolerant to dry conditions. It has a deep tap root um, and it doesn't require a lot of water. It's also adapted to um, low quality growing conditions. So poor soil health with low organic matter, low fertility, low pH. Um, these are conditions that this crop tends to do very well in. So it's one that we can potentially grow in Wyoming in some of our less than ideal conditions um, that we, even in an irrigated system, don't have to delegate a lot of our irrigation water to um, and can maybe get by with watering um, less frequently uh, to help with that water um, availability and scheduling. Uh, so these are all things that make sun hemp really appealing in terms of fitting it into a Wyoming um, crop rotation. As far as its uses go, so in the US, primarily it has been used as a green manure cover crop. So because it's a legume, um, it also has a very rapid growth rate, so it can grow up to four feet in two months. Um, it makes a good cover crop where you can plant it in a short season, get a lot of biomass, get up to 120 pounds of nitrogen fixed per acre, and then incorporate it and get that uh, nitrogen credit for your cash crop. Um, sun hemp is also used as a fiber crop in a lot of regions. Uh, so it can be used for ropes and paper and other fiber goods. Um, this is how it's used internationally. Um, we used to use it in the US for fiber products, but it is um, at this point not very commonly used. What I am interested in is its ability to be used as a forage crop. Here in Wyoming, we have a 
lot of cattle. Um, we have a lot of sheep and other livestock. And oftentimes we are looking for high quality um, feed alternatives. So when we think of our animal feeds, a crop like alfalfa is one that we want in a ration because alfalfa has higher protein content um, and other benefits than just having a grass mixture. Alfalfa, like sun hemp, is a legume. And so sun hemp has a lot of the similar properties to alfalfa. Uh, the big difference is that while alfalfa is a perennial crop and you can get multiple cuttings in a year, um, sun hemp is a short season crop. So it's going to grow for the summer. And where it's potentially really beneficial is as a short season substitute in a rotation, um, as a rescue crop, or just an emergency crop to get in the ground if you know you're going to be short on feed for the year. The big question is how good of a forage crop is it in Wyoming? So that's exactly what I want to figure out is can sun hemp be um, grown in Wyoming? Can it work as a warm season forage crop? Um, so what is the target planting time for sun hemp? We don't really know how it responds to our temperatures and our growing season. So looking at if there's an ideal planting time for the crop is going to be useful. Um, I want to understand how that planting time affects growth, yield, and quality of the crop. So by quality, I mean that feed quality. Um, so what I'm looking at is whether or not we can maintain a high quality um, feed of sun hemp and if when we plant it affects that feed quality. And then um, with that, what is the feed quality of sun hemp here in Wyoming? There are studies that have shown it has, you know, 15 to up to 25 percent protein in it. Um, it depends on the growing conditions, when it's harvested, how it's managed. And so I want to understand if sun hemp can hold that quality here in Wyoming and potentially work as a forage crop for our producers. So what we did is in 2017 and 2018, um, we started a study where we were looking at the effective planting date um, on sun hemp. So looked at three planting dates, early, mid, and late. So our early was planted at the end of May, our mid was planted at the beginning of June, and then our late planting date was planted towards the middle to end of June. Um, and then after planting, we looked at, um, oh, sorry, we did this study under both irrigated and rain-fed conditions. So in addition to looking at that planting date component, we wanted to understand how much could we really stress sun hemp with water and still have it grow. So under our rain-fed conditions, the crop was given no supplemental irrigation at all. Um, it was completely rain-fed. And under the irrigated conditions, we did water it, but we did find that we wanted to water at the most every other week or the crop would really start to get waterlogged and it was more water than what the crop wanted to deal with. And then we looked at how the crop did under these conditions. So how plant, planting date and irrigation affected um, crop height, how it affected our biomass. So we looked at biomass after 60 days of growth. This in the literature has kind of been deemed the, um, you know, peak time to harvest where you've used the least amount of growing time, but you're getting a high amount of biomass. Um, so we went with the 60 days, although moving forward, we're probably going to start to look at longer times to harvest. And then of that biomass, um, looking at the feed value. The reason that I looked at height over time is one of the things that I want to know is does planting early or late cause the crop to grow differently, uh, meaning different height, and does that happen more quickly or more slowly at different times of year.
So we're going to start with looking at sun hemp growth. Um, this is one of our plots. So this is the crop growing in the field. Um, what you see here is this is our early, this is a mid, and this is a late planting date. So you can see how those crops um, are at different heights or, or at different thickness um, at that specific day of the year. For our data here, um, since we didn't really want to compare them on a day of year because you can see how different they are, what we're looking at is days after planting. So this is a way to make all of the heights um, comparable because for our early planting date, we're looking at 10 days after planting and at our you know, late planting date, we're looking at 10 days after planting and how tall that crop is getting in that uh, same time frame. So days after planting down on the bottom, and then we have our rain fed crop here as well as our irrigated crop in, in blue here. And really the takeaway from these figures, um, so we've got 2017 and 2018, 2017 and 2018 with our different planting dates. And that gets to be a whole lot of things to look at. So what I'm gonna point out is first of all, in our rain fed um, system, what we see is in 2017, we have this overall good rate of growth early, and then we really tend to flatten out. This was a very hot, dry year, um, and we see that with the lack of water, the sun hemp growth was definitely stunted. So depending on how little water you give the crop, it is gonna affect it. Um, however, in our 2018 data here in the dash lines, we see that um, early in the season, we have relatively uh, slow rate of growth, and then that crop really starts to take off in the last 30 days that it's growing. Um, and we're reaching up to a meter and a half um, tall crop, which is about um, four feet. So that's where we would expect that crop height to be. Similarly, with our irrigated study, um, we don't see quite the difference between our um, 2017 and 2018 data. You see them grouping together a lot more. Um, in 2017, we do see our growth just a little bit higher than what we see in 2018. Um, and just as a note, the lines that I have chosen to color here are all for our late planting dates. So every year we did see that the late planting date did seem to give the sun hemp a slight bit of a growth advantage in terms of reaching taller heights faster than the other planting dates. All right, so what does this mean in terms of actual biomass production? Um, does that height translate into tons per acre of um, plant material? So here we're looking at, again, this is 60 day biomass accumulation, and we're looking at pounds per acre on a dry weight basis for this crop. Again, we have rain fed and irrigated separated out, and we have our two years um, under both conditions. And what was really surprising is that between the planting dates, we did not see any meaningful differences in the biomass that was accumulated. So even though we saw some differences in the height of the crop, when it came to the biomass that each uh, treatment produced over 60 days, we did not see that our planting date had a very significant effect. So in 2017, we had um, 1,300 pounds per acre on average. Um, again, that year was very hot and dry, and we saw that our height was um, slowed down across the board for all of those crops. In 2018, we see a much better yield for our rain fed, um, where we're at almost um, 3,000 pounds per acre. So a much better yield on that crop. Under our irrigated conditions, uh, the two years are much more similar. 
um, because we were irrigating and hopefully irrigating in a way that we're maximizing the crop. So both years we were right around uh, 2,200 pounds per acre. In 2018, we did see a difference in our planting dates. So in 2018, we did see that our mid planting date gave us a better yield than our other two planting dates. But this did not hold true across any of those other treatments. So we're not really sure why this planting date was so beneficial. Um, it wasn't something that was consistent. Um, but generally speaking, this mid planting date, which is, um, sorry, in early June, is probably where we want to target um, our planting for this crop. All right, and then last but not least is our feed value. So the feed value of sun hemp is really um, the critical component of this study, because if we want to be able to grow this crop in our rotation, get some of the rotational benefits from having a legume, but then also be able to use it as a supplemental feed for our livestock, um, we have to know if it actually has a high quality feed. So we looked at how um, our both rain fed and irrigated, our different years, and then our different planting dates all affected our feed value of this crop. And quite honestly, it gets to be a lot of numbers um, that are not really that important to look at individually. If you want, you are more than free to pause this slide and look at each one of those numbers. But for the sake of simplifying and telling the most important pieces of the study, I'm gonna simplify this down. So instead of looking at those planting dates, we're just gonna look at the average across the planting dates. So we've still got our rain fed and irrigated. We've still got our two years worth of data. And what we're looking at are crude protein, acid detergent fiber, neutral detergent fiber, and total digestible nutrients. These are um, critical components of feed and ones that are pretty standard to look at in terms of quality. We're gonna compare the numbers for our sun hemp to numbers for good quality alfalfa. Okay, and what I've done here for our alfalfa is I've put the range that is listed by the USDA standards for good quality, and I've put either an up or a down arrow. So for crude protein, the range is 18 to 20% for good quality alfalfa. Anything above that is considered better quality. For the ADF, 29 to 32% is considered good quality. And as those numbers go down, your quality improves. So what we see for all of these values, if we start with crude protein, if we're above 20, we're above that um, good standard. So for all of our crops, or for all of our growing conditions, we're well above that 20% protein. Um, for our ADF, we want to be below 29. And again, you can see all of our numbers here are below that 29 mark. For our NDF, same thing. We want to be below 36 for these values. And we are below 36 for all of them. And then last but not least, our TDN, we want to be above that 60%. And for all of our values, we are above that 60%. So what this tells us is that across the board, really regardless of our planting date, regardless of our irrigation system, and across all of our years, we were able to maintain a nice high quality um, of that alfalfa feed, or of that sun hemp feed, sorry, um, which is really very encouraging. Now, this is kind of under ideal circumstances where we're hand harvesting, we're cutting after 60 days, we're making sure we get every scrap of good leaf. Um, so these are kind of what I would describe as best case scenario values. Um, but even if they go down a little bit, there's still a lot of potential to grow a high quality feed with a sun hemp crop.
So what we know so far, um, some of the important things that we're finding out with sun hemp is its initial growth is slow. We saw that with that height data where over the first 30 days, we get a pretty slow rate of growth in this crop. That means that we're going to need good weed control um, and we're going to have to nurse that crop along for a little while. It may mean that what we want to do is start to um, explore looking at a crop mix. Oops, that's not working. So seeding it with potentially another crop like teff grass or Sudan grass um, and looking at mixing it to help protect that um, crop over those first 30 days. We do think, even though we didn't see a lot of difference between our um, planting dates, early June is probably when we want to target planting, just because we know we can get late freezes and this crop is not going to respond well to that. So going into it a little bit later, mid, um, you know, early June, mid June, you're going to get um, a faster initial rate of growth, ideally, and just protect that crop a little bit better. We did see, oh, I forgot to change this value, but we saw we were really at like the one to, to two tons um, per acre in 60 days. I think we can get this better. Um, this is just initial studies, so we're hoping to, to get that number up um, a little bit. And then our feed quality is is equal to good quality alfalfa. So there is potentially a use and a good market for this crop once we perfect uh, growing and managing. Moving forward, um, we're starting to look at how this crop is fixing nitrogen in our system. So what kind of extra nitrogen are we getting for our rotation? A big question we have is harvest management. Um, so like I said, we hand harvest our crop, but we know farmers are not gonna hand harvest a field. So is it better to hay the crop? Is it better to chop it like silage? Um, what's the best management strategy um, to harvest the crop and when should you do it? So we're looking outside of that 60 day window and trying to identify um, when the best time to harvest the crop is. We're also doing feeding studies. So those are starting this year where we're looking at how um, cattle respond to eating um, the sun hemp, if it's palatable, and then how their growth um, gains are when fed a diet with it mixed into their rations. Okay, so I will end there. That is where we are at on sun hemp. Um, I think it's really got a lot of potential for our state. I'm really excited about it. And I am hoping that in the next year or two, we'll have a lot more information and be able to start getting um, some, some crop in the ground um, and seeing our farmers benefit from it. Thank you.